All right, today's video is by far gonna, going to be the most complex, confusing, vast details and information that even deceives the eyes and mind of even professional dog trainers in the world. So I've had requests for this for a long time and I've avoided it. It's a big subject. It's a controversial subject in a lot of areas. But I decided that so many people have been asking me lately that it's time to do this video. Now, as I'm doing this video, I just want to make clear that I am not against or bashing or criticizing any of the areas or dog sports that I'm going to bring up and talk about in this video. I'm just going to lay out for you the truth and so that you can be aware of how these exercises are truly being done and portrayed to the public trainers because everybody always wants to know what's the difference between a real protection dog and a sport titled protection dog. There's a big, big difference. So, it's a very complex subject. It's probably, this is definitely going to be the most complex thing I've ever done on my channel. All right, so I thought by giving you three examples, three different sports, three different types of dog, of the base game and psychology of what we're going to be talking about and the function and the outlook that protection sport dogs have. So again, yeah, we're talking about IPO Schutzen, French Ring, those are mainly the ones and any of the main uh, ring sports like Mondio and that same thing. So keep that in mind. So in all three of these examples I'm going to show you, and how the sports are based, this is what I call pursuing the rabbit or the prey, not the fight. Okay, so that is going to be the cornerstone to how we're going to view everything in this video and what the sports are basing themselves on. Okay, so again, in all three, I'm going to show you a hunting dog, a Labrador, <laughs> right? That is, cannot do protection work. It's not meant for protection work or biting. The French ring dog and the Schutz and IPO dog. But all have the same base philosophy within their sports and the outlook and in what they breed for. Okay, so keep that in mind. Again, it's what I call chasing the rabbit or their prey animal, not pursuing a fight. Okay, that is the main basis of this video. So, I'll show you the three examples here. A lot of people think you're throwing a lab in there with hunting. Because if you understand anything about the psychology of this, and as I get quickly into the video, you're going to see the relation between all three. Just because it appears that the Schutzen dog bites or the ring sport dog grabs a suit and shakes the guy, that the lab is not in the same category because he's chasing his toy, his bumper. It's all three the same. So, we're going to go into it here. I'm just going to show you an example of all three doing the same thing, but in just their ways of how they pursue prey.
So all identical starting, all either in a sit or a down passive. The game is for all three, the rule for those dogs is before you go get your toy, you must be passive state of mind. So all three of the lab, the shepherd and the Malinois, all still, you see a little bit of jumpiness, right? But that is only because they're going, oh, please let me go get my toy, okay? So let's now take a look at what the psychology here is between the three here. So let's take the lab first. The woman out there, so since the dog has to be calm and steady, right? That's what he's taught by his owner handler. And so now, passive, when the woman throws the toy, you know it's killing the dog inside, right? Because he wants to go get his toy so badly. It's not that he wants to go kill his toy, right? He wants to go chase his prey object. It's prey drive, right? And now when you see the shuts and IPO dog, the shepherd sitting there, you see the guy, right, who would be the equivalent of the woman with the lab throwing the bumper. You see the guy with the sleeve on for the shepherd down there, the shepherd staring at him. He's got the sleeve on, he's doing this towards him and moving, right, a certain way. Like kind of running at him, making it a little bit, right? The guy with the sleeve on to the dog, the sleeve is the toy, just as it was for the bumper for the lab. The shepherd is not looking at the guy like he wants to kill him. It's nothing to do with the guy. He just happens to be wearing his toy, right? So he's in prey drive mode, not fight drive and go get the guy. It's not personal between him and the guy at all. It's just about the toy that he's wearing on his sleeve that the dog knows he's gonna go and grab and hit and be able to play with. Nothing about attacking the man, right? But that movement he's doing is the same as the woman doing this and throwing the bumper which drives the lab crazy. Right? Oh my God, the toy was thrown. <laughs> right? The shepherd is going, oh, he's moving. He's moving and doing, right? It, that turns his juices on, the same as the lab. It's only prey drive. Oh, please let me go catch the toy. He, it's moving. It's like the rabbit moving. Then you have the French ring dog who's sitting there passively. And the guy in the suit is running around trying to make the dog nuts and get his juices flowing. It's a rabbit moving, it's the prey moving. The dog is not thinking about the man. That he wants to fight the man and have confrontation with the man. Right? The guy is wearing his toy. Okay, so in the three examples, one is wearing the toy in a full body, one is wearing the toy on the arm, and the other one is throwing the toy away from the body. All same things. So, I'm going to give you an example right here to show you right off the bat what I'm saying about this <laughs> with a bite dog, appears to be a bite dog, right? So this is the 2018 World Championships in Schutzen IPL, okay? These are the best of the best dogs in the world competing in this for the title of best IPO dog in the world, shuts and dog, okay? You're gonna see here on the exercise, which is every dog has to do this exercise, the dog knows how it works, he knows how to go chase his prey, his toy off the guy. So you're gonna see the owner send the Malawa, and when he takes off and hits the sleeve, the sleeve goes flying Right? The dog takes the sleeve off of the guy, which happens not too often in the competitions. The dog 
picks the sleeve up and comes running past him that he just took the sleeve off and starts running around with the toy, the sleeve in his mouth and comes back to the guy he just took the sleeve off of and puts it here because he wants to play with him, with the sleeve. Okay? So I want you to watch this right now. So what does this tell you? And this is not just this dog. This is almost all IPO shuts and dogs. The game is play. It's not real aggression protection. This is just an example, right, on the competition field of the mindset of these dogs. If he was a real protection dog, and when he grabbed that sleeve and went flying in the air and had it in his mouth, he would have dropped the sleeve and mauled the guy without the sleeve on, with no equipment on, he would have to fight the dog without any equipment. If the dog was in the mindset, he was in real protection game, fighting the man, not just going after the sleeve and playing with it, he would have instantly dropped the sleeve and went after the guy and we would have had a big problem on the championship field because that guy would have had to fight that dog off if he was a real protection dog, right? And the dog does not know this guy, right? This is just a, a decoy that they pick for the competition. The dog does not know this guy. So it's just about the routine of running across the fields and chasing those toys that the dog has been on a million times in training over his life right? There's no aggressive state of mind. He's only in prey mode or else he would have mauled this guy when he took the sleeve off him and he brought it back to him to play with him. So on the training fields in shots and IPO, all of them during training and the dog's upbringing, it's always that when the dog comes and flies in, takes a sleeve, dog takes it off and runs around with it will bring it back to the guy he just pulled the sleeve off and the guy will play with him with the toy, pull around, pet the dog and let him go and run with his toy. There is no aggression to that game. Okay, so that's the example I'm giving you about the lab, the Schutzen dog and the French ring dog. Okay, now if we go over to talking about the reality, let's talk the French ring dog here. You see when the guy's running around he sends the dog and he gets on there and it looks like he's shaking and he's in aggressive state. The more the movement in the suit, the more it turns that drive on for the dog to stay in there and shake. Okay? But the guy is mostly going backwards and away, getting prey drive on, then stops, right, doing his stick thing, doesn't bother the dog. He's done this a million times since he's a puppy. The stick doesn't bother him at all. And the sound of the stick and touching just actually keeps him in drive and, and keeps him going because it stimulates the mind and the nerves. Right? So, for that dog, because he's just chasing that toy, that suit, it's not a fight against the man in the suit. So now you see the guy down there with his hands underneath the dog, touching him, picking him up. His face is right here to the dog biting in there like, like this. Right? With a real protection dog, they would have bit you in the face. Yep. Here you're going to see we have helmets 
on a few of these guys. While we're doing some of the training with the dogs I was working with, because they were headhunters. Oh, got, he got oh, the helmet. They, he hey, right in the helmet. That's his problem. He's no, no, no. That. That's why I got the helmet. He's always done that. That's his problem. He goes to the head. These dogs are protecting for real. They will bite you anywhere. You give it to them, they are gonna fight you. They're gonna fight you and just get you and however they can. Giant Schnauzer are here. Up on me, let's go, doesn't like that spot. Comes down, grabs me in the leg. Right? I've never taught him leg bites. It was just natural instinct. He's going to grab me anywhere he can. And hold on. And you hear the differences in the, in the, in the, in these bites. It goes sideways, right? Yeah. Right, move sideways. Walk him sideways as you touch him. Rebite. Rebite. All right. And then you see the guy puts his hands on the dog's face when they call him off and he puts his hands against his face and lays him down with his hands on his head and then puts his hand out into the dog's face. Right? If that was a real protection dog and you would have put your hands on his face and tried to lay him down, he would have bit you in the hands and you'd be bleeding, losing fingers. Right? Because the dog is fighting the man no matter what you give him. He's going to get you. He's in a fight state of mind. The French ring dog is in a state of play with his suit toy. He's not trying to hurt the man. So the fingers are on his head, all over him, anywhere, face, he's not going to bite him in the face. He's not, the decoy knows that for sure if he's been playing in the French ring game. Even though the decoy doesn't know the dog, he knows he's safe because the dogs that are in French ring, the people who run these clubs and organizations are not going to let a real protection dog in there that there's any chance that they would let go and bite the decoy in the face or in the hands, right? So it's just a game of prey. It's not personal to the decoy. He's not trying to bite the decoy and fight him. He just wants to play with that toy, right? Shepherds Malinois love to play tug of war and that fight, but same thing. It's prey drive. It's not fighting the man. Now, let's go here to the training field of the Schutzen IPO dog. I'm going to show you a few examples. You're going to see here those running hits, right? Long flying hits and those, you know, nice things that people love to see and watch. <laughs> but you're going to see the truth here 
of how these dogs are built and the mentality that's built into them. So just watch these examples of these dogs biting and you're going to see the little fight once the dog comes and grabs on and then the decoy lets the sleeve go, gives it to him or has the sleeve toy and when the dog comes flying through they let him have it, let go of it and the dog runs around with it and the decoy's just walking around like nothing, right? Because the decoys know 100% that that dog is not in an aggressive state of mind. He's not being taught protection work in defense drive, in aggression, in real aggression to go after the man. It's about the style and flair of chasing the toy quickly, looks great so the more style the more speed the more fancy the more points you get in shots in the better it looks for the judges right it's all about the style how fast and the hits right so you see they'll give a little fight let him pull on his toy his rabbit right his prey that he's and then they'll let him have it no it's all safe because the dog is not in real protection mode. He's only in prey drive chasing his animal. Okay? So this is the reality. So watch the clips here. Okay, so you see at one after another, doesn't matter how he gives them the hits, the sleeve lets go, dog runs within his mouth, nothing to be worried about. The dog is not going to bite the man. It's not real protection. It's being done in prey drive. Now, let's talk about the barking, because a lot of people are confused about this when they see it. In Schutzen, they really require not when sending dogs. They want calm and passive, opposite of a real protection dog. So, but once they send the dog in the examination, in the competition, the moment the dog, when it's from passive, waits, sent to go grab his toy. The moment the decoy stops, the judge tells him to stop, there, they tell him to come off, the dog is told to let go of the sleeve, he lets go, and what is expected of him, rawr, 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 he's to sit there and bark at the man. Right? So what's the psychology behind this? The dog is not barking at the man. It appears to everybody that the dog is barking at the man aggressively. He's talking to the man going, please move again so I can get my toy. Please move again so I can get the toy. He's not at the guy going, oh, I'm going to kill you. Oh, I can't wait to bite you. Oh, it's nothing personal. So as nasty as it might look and spit coming. He's frustrated. How much do I have to bark to make you move, right? So in practice, behind the scenes, as the dog barks, the reward is a movement of the sleeve, and that's the dog's cue to be able to grab his toy again. 
or sideways. Okay, so it's either flipping the sleeve up, giving a flinch, or sideways movement. Any movement like that, the dog is allowed to bite again. But the dog knows he has to go through barking because in training, the shuts in game or IPO wants to see the talking, acts as if there's stimulation and aggression. It's just about grabbing his toy again. So that's what you're seeing when the dogs come off the sleeve and rawr, 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 rawr. It's only, please move, please move, please move so I can bite the toy again. It's not personal to the man, even though it might look like that. Right, and again here, when he goes around the blind, he starts talking to him inside the teepee. Bar, rah, rah, because he knows, right? In time, this is what he's taught every day. When he runs and finds the guy inside the teepee, as long you got to talk a lot, keep it up, because the judges want to see a lot of talking and good moment on that talking, right? You're gonna get judged on how good your talking is and all, right? Your your style and your enthusiasm for the talking, but he's not at the guy, right? He's trying to get him to move to get his toy. He just knows the more he barks and the longer you make the dog bark, the more frustration. So you're going to get more barking, heavier barking, like, come on, move already. Okay? And then you see the guy backs up, grabs the sleeve, and what's he do? He lets the sleeve go and gives it to him right while he's standing there and they move away. To There's no aggression towards the guy whatsoever. Right? So... I just want everybody to understand the psychology of what's behind it. There is no real protection happening behind these skills or what it appears to the, to the eye, right? It's just the way it is, <laughs> right? Or they would not be dropping that sleeve and letting him, right? And if it was a real protection dog, you better have a whole body on to protect yourself because if you, they go in there like that and they're that close, you might get it here, you might get it here, you might get it here, you might get it over here, you might get it. Right? Hold, hold, hold. Wait, wait, wait. Right? Now, here. Oh, man, he got your shirt. Oh, yeah, man. What? <laughs> you see, Brian? Damn, he got you good, man. <laughs> right? That's the difference between sport training, real protection dogs. Here, French ring example. When the dog is biting on the guy, right? And they tell him to out, he drops down. The guy stays there and waits because moment the dog out, same game as in IPO shots. And the moment he's told out, the dog stops and the decoy stays still. Right, but what you see the dog do here is the, almost the same thing that the shepherd was doing with the sleeve, barking at the man to get him to move so he can grab the sleeve. Now he's down here, the guy stays and waits, the dog is there by his leg and poking him in the leg, barking while he pokes him in the leg, like, come on, move, move, because I can only bite the toy when you move, <laughs> right? So, of course, you see the dog rawr, rawr, and poking him with his nose. He won't bite him. He knows the rules. But it's not personal to the decoy in the French ring. He just wants to play with his toy again. Right? And then when you see the guy move, the dog goes and grabs the suit. <laughs> right? It's all in play drive.
Now, let's look at an exercise of, I've shown many dogs on my YouTube channel as we do our protection, of when we tell them to watch, they go start rah, 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 and barking at the decoy. Now, when we start to do our backwards walking, rah, 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 they're talking to the decoy. If we stay still, the dog will circle us rah, rah, and keep barking at the decoy. because what we've taught them is in real protection in real life we want to try to get rid of that threat to us right by having the dog threaten the guy that he'd be crazy to try to come near me with my dog in that state of mind that's the purpose of that right so it's getting him in that state of mind while he's walking backwards with us when we turn them on at the person Right? So, arr, arr, arr. That's real life because you want to scare anybody who's trying to hurt you or that they better not even think about it. When you see a dog going crazy and spit flying in teeth, right? That's real protection. So, I'm going to show you here an example in the French ring sport that one, it's very slow so they can keep the dog very concentrated. It's not difficult to hold. So, the walking is very slow. Okay, so it doesn't take a lot from the dog to hold that and focus when it's so slow. Second thing is, you see there's no emotion. The dogs are completely quiet and they just stay with the owner. They've seen this game a million times, they know how it's played out. The decoy's going to walk around and eventually touch the owner and then the dog's allowed to bite from the touch. Now, but what's the psychology difference? The dog, as he's walking with the owner in that protection exercise, he's not talking. One, he wasn't told to, but he knows the exercise. He doesn't be told what's going to happen. The dog already knows what's going to happen. Two, 
it's not aggressive state of mind. He's not worried about the decoy or thinking he's going to fight him. Right? It's just part of the game. He holds the legs. The more he stays with the owner and protects him, or it kind of shields him, he knows that the moment the touch will come, he'll get to play with his toy again. So it's not, rah, 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 come on, come and touch my owner. I'm going to hurt you. That's what our dogs are taught. Talk, vocalize, threaten while you hold those legs. Much harder to do holding that backward walking or circling and talking while in an aggressive state of mind. Much harder to control the dog because they really want the fight. We've taught them real protection that this is not a game. The decoy is not a friend of yours. You're not sparring partners, right? <laughs> that you've played this together for years, right? That you know there's no real threat from that person. So you hear no barking. So the dog knows what's coming. Come on, come on, I just want to play with my toy. So he stands there, walks around him, holds on the leg and then waits for the touch. And when touch, he goes and grabs and he starts to, right? But there's no threat factor, no emotion, no aggressive state, no real fight drive happening while trying to hold those legs and control their emotions in themselves. So that's why I always say, <clears throat> the stuff that I show on my YouTube channel with my protection dogs doing their backwards walking while the dog is talking, rah, rah, when we've turned them on to threaten the guy in the suit is a way harder level because they're not only trying to hold the body while being aggressive and trying to bring a fight to a guy, but they got to hold that back. We also add faster movement and different directions of movement that the sports don't have. Right? This takes things to a whole other level. Right? So many more components and much harder because these dogs are in real fight drive. They're not in play drive waiting to play with the toy like the dogs here I'm showing you. Here's an example also of they have the dog behind. The guy's here with the sleeve. Same thing as if he was in the blind but with no blind. Now the guy's back is to the dog, right? So they tell the dog, Revere, he goes, and he runs from behind the guy with the sleeve and comes to the front where the sleeve is and starts barking. Now, if this was a real protection dog, he would have bit him from behind him, bit him right in the leg, bit him in the butt, bit him in the back, got up on him. He did not want the man. He wanted the object. So he ran around to where the sleeve is presented because he knows this is where he'll get it. If it was the man, he would have bit him from behind already and went straight for the man. Another indicator to you what the dog is thinking and what mindset he's in. He is not out to hurt the man or have a fight with him. He just wants his toy. Okay? So, it's big differences. So, it's a very tricky line. It's a very complicated subject and path and, and whole thing. So, I hope that <laughs> I did a good enough job giving you, you know, the outlook of this. And again, not trying to get anybody mad at me with this. It's just the way it is and you go about things. So, till next time, Miami Dog Whisperer.